Hello everyone, welcome to my latest episode of Schlick Sports Made in the River City. I'm your host, Noah Schlicksa. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on a podcast platform. It's Thanksgiving week, just a couple days out from Turkey Day, and I had a nice little Thanksgiving surprise. Jasmine Roberts, one of the best high school basketball players in the area, did an interview with me, and let me say, I really enjoyed it. Jasmine, now a freshman at the University of Miami, scored over 2,000 career points during her career at Bishop Kenny, and she's even majoring in sports broadcasting. I've enjoyed it so far. But enough chit-chat. Let's get into this interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm here with Jasmine Roberts. Jasmine, thank you for coming on the show. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. First up, uh, I... After doing some research, I know the answer to this question, but it's pretty big for you becoming a basketball player, it seems like. Uh, so my question is, who's your favorite player growing up? My favorite player growing up, um, between Kobe and LeBron James, definitely. Yeah, and I got a would-you-rather question that's going to be interesting, uh, but I think I know at the end what the answer is going to be. Uh, but what were some of your earliest memories in basketball? Um, I would say some of my earliest memories would be just like starting out, um, like starting out as playing with all boys until middle school. So I started playing in second grade and I played with all guys up until sixth grade. And so I would say like just remembering the like having to be physical and just like, you know, trying to find a role and playing with all guys and like just having to step up and like not be afraid that it was against all guys. So I would say like those were like my earliest memories. Yeah, and that definitely looks like it helped you out because, I mean, you become one of the best basketball players to come out of Jacksonville, especially, you know, you look at your high school career. We'll get to that in a little bit. But when did you start to realize that you could go pretty far in the sport? Uh, I would say around eighth grade. Um, that's when I started playing travel ball, AU, And um, I got my first college, like, you know, like notice letter in eighth grade after playing in a tournament um and then I would say after that that's when I realized like I could actually you know like play college basketball because you know when you play when you're playing at a young age you're not really thinking you like you're just playing for fun you know like mm -hmm. you love the sport but then like when colleges start taking notice you're like okay like let's take this more seriously like you have potentially you can go further than just like you know in school ball so I think that that's when I um, after getting my first like notar notice letter in the eighth grade, that's when I just took a lot more seriously. I started putting in the extra work and um, realizing that I could play in college. What were a few things you changed there? Like, did you have any workouts you did, or uh, did you just start, you know, shooting in the driveway more often? Um, I started training because, like, like I said um, before high school. I didn't really train much. It was kind of just like I was just athletic and I was good at basketball. Mm -hmm. But obviously I had things that I need to, you know, get better at. So I would say after when I made the decision that I did want to play in college, I started, you know, like training um, with different people and just like making my game better, like enhancing different things and, you know, doing skill work and also like uh, lifting different things like that. Who are a few people you went to train with here? Um, Nick, um, Nick Sabrino, he's my trainer in Jacksonville. He has a brand called Can't Cheat the Grind, CCTG. And so, like, he kind of took me in and, like, he, I started training with him. Also, um, Coach Clark, who is now a coach at UNF, she trained me. I always worked out with her. Like, it, those two people were, um, definitely my trainers in Jacksonville. Yeah, and they definitely... Looks like they helped you out a little bit because you scored 2,000 career points in high school. That's outstanding. Uh, and at Bishop Kenny, you had a really successful run with them there. You made the playoffs mm -hmm. every year, all 20 win seasons. Uh, what Can you tell us a little bit about your time there? Reflect on it. Yes. Um, it was it, it was awesome. I mean, like, I started I, – I transferred there my sophomore year of high school, so went there from uh, 10th grade to 12th. And – I would say the program and the culture that Coach Clark built there is so great. Um, she really developed me into the player I am. I mean, like, 
like I said, going into it, I just very athletic, but like obviously like had a lot of things to work on and like she just craft like she she made me like really work on my craft and she also coached me up like to just be more of a leader. So I would say like I just grew into a much better person at Bishop Kenny playing on that team and like also like I wasn't just the only one, like I had a great supporting cast, like Maddie Millard, Jamia Neesmith, like those people, um, like it was us three and with um, other great players. And so I would say we just all clicked well on the court and we bought into the system that Coach Clark had and we um, uh, made great runs in the playoffs. Yeah, and she definitely built a culture there. I know Maddie just committed to UNF, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. and you, I got the chance to see you guys play last year when you visited Creekside. I think you had 20 points mm-hmm. in that game. Uh, but you guys ended up going 15-9 and nine in the regular season, but really stepped it up in the postseason, making it all the way to the state semifinals. Did you guys really believe you could be- make it that far going in? Um, Going in, I knew we could. I knew we would make it that far, actually. I would say we sh- we my senior season, we um had a rough start. Like, I think we went on a five or six game losing streak. Um, I was out with COVID and then like things just, it, it kind of, we had our, we had like, we struggled for about three weeks. I think we went actually a month without winning a game. Wow. Um, it was bad. Yeah. But like, it really tested us. Like, I think it tested our character and the fact that we were able to, you know, like get through that adversity as a team and still make a great run in the playoffs. Like we had to be Reigns and Reebok to get to Lakeland. So I mean, that um, says a lot about our team, and I, I knew we would get through it. I knew we would make it because I never wanted to lose to Reigns or Reebok. Like, I, I I had to get back to Lakeland, and, like, obviously my goal was to win a championship, but, like, it was still a great experience, you know, to make it that far. Yeah, you had an incredible run there. As looking on max preps, it's just win after win after win, and then you eventually end up losing to a nationally ranked program, but it really was a great run for you guys. And after such a great high school career, you career you really made a impact on the entire Jacksonville basketball scene. Uh, how does that kind of dra- drive you to keep moving up in the sport? And then what does that mean to you having that big of an impact? I mean, it means a lot to me um, for people to you know, remember me and remember how I played. And I hope they remember, like, me as a person as well and, like, how great I am a person because I am. At least I would like to think I am. But, um, I mean, it means a lot to me that I made an impact. And um, I hope that people that come after me, you know, can make a great impact. I hope that they can, you know, like, make a difference and just be a great player and also just a great person. Yeah, the Jacksonville basketball team back on the rise. Uh, Rania Davis got drafted first round last year in the WNBA Mm -hmm. draft. And, you're a freshman at Miami now. Why did you end up choosing them for college? Um, I chose Miami because of the opportunities that would meet me when I got here and as well as after college, too. Um, it's a great program, a great coaching staff, and just great opportunities. Um, very family-oriented. We're, like I, I met the players. I met the coaches. And like it just seemed like a great fit for me. Um, and also, just like I said, after college, I felt like I would have a lot of opportunities just like graduating from Miami, networking and connections. I thought that like if basketball ended while I was in college, that I would still be able to have a great career after college. And you're looking to go into sports broadcasting as well, right? Yes, yes. Well, Maybe that's... we could work together, you know, you know? Yeah, that's that'd be fun. <laughs> it's it's definitely a fun uh fun business. Uh I, I love broadcasting, especially at Creekside uh Play-by-play is a fun job. I got to call a treat of a game last night. But uh, you're playing at Miami. You started off 4-0. and How's that treating you so far? Um, It's going good. Our team, we've been putting – we put in a lot of work. I mean, a lot of hours. When I say, like, three-hour practices, um, five days a week, I mean, like, we, we put in a lot of work. And we've been playing – we've been playing well. Um. We're going to go and play in the Bahamas next week, and we're going to play some nationally ranked teams, Indiana, Washington State. I think Indiana's number seven, and Washington State's is top 25 as well. So, like, we'll definitely be battle-tested next week, and I think that we're ready and we're fit to compete with them. 
Um, we went through a lot of adversity on our team as well. And I think that we just battled through it and we can beat those two teams. Definitely coming in as an underdog. That would definitely be, you know, statement wins for you guys. And I mean, mm-hmm. you're playing in the Bahamas too on Thanksgiving Day. I mean, that's yeah. you got to be looking forward to that, right? Yes, I am. Um, obviously, it's a lot different. I've never played on Thanksgiving during Thanksgiving break, but I think that it'll be a great, um, you know, experience for us just to like travel to somewhere new and just um, compete and play the game we love and also just have a little mini vacation <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. Have you ever played out of the country before? I have not. Um, this will be my first time. First time for everything. Yeah. And, and then do you have any personal goals set for this season? Um. Yes, I do. I would like to be like, you know, freshman, first team something, whether it be offense, defense, and just like make an impact on my team anyway, how like getting a lot of minutes and just um doing the things to help my team win. Yeah, you've played a little bit so far. You scored your first career points at Miami. Mm-hmm. How was that? Um, it's been great. I mean, like it it means a lot when like your cut co- your coaches can trust you and um to, you know, to play you as a freshman and um it's obviously it's a it's a what what word would I say? <laughs> I mean you gotta earn it. Yeah, yeah, you have to earn it. And um if if a if a coach is playing you as a freshman and you know it means they believe in you, it means that they trust you and like making mistakes they're okay with that um as long as you just you know learn from them and they want to see you play hard so that color change in the room really threw me off for a minute (laughs) oh my light cut off oh there we go there you go we have like sensor light (laughs) our lights in here are like uh motion sensors so like like in the office (laughs) yeah if it doesn't sense movement it'll just cut off on you sorry (laughs) the white shirt has taken over the building yeah. So I got a few would you rather questions here to end out the interview. Would you be up for that? Yeah. All right. So getting to know you a bit off the court here, would you rather eat Italian or Mexican food? Uh, I'm going to say Italian. I mm-hmm. love Alfredo. Alfredo. That's so the good. correct answer. <laughs> would you rather watch a TV show or a movie? Definitely a TV show. All right. And then... Here's the LeBron question I was wondering. And uh, so first off, leading into it, uh, would you rather play with LeBron James or Michael Jordan? LeBron James. All right. So are you taking him as the GOAT? Yes, of course. Uh, I don't I'm, know. I'm I'm from like the Chicago area, so I'm Michael Jordan all day. Oh yeah, okay. You're bi- see, you're biased. It's biased. I mean, you grew up like Kobe, now LeBron on the Lakers. I mean, just a little bit of bias there. Nah, nah, because LeBron, LeBron's been my goat <laughs> since I first started watching basketball. Like. Yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, I had a great time getting to talk with you. All right. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for listening to my latest interview. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on a podcast platform, be sure to give a good review and follow Schlick Sportsman in the River City on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And no matter what you're listening to this on, be sure to share. Help get this out there. I appreciate any help. I'm putting a lot of work into this, and I've enjoyed it so far. Thank you guys all for watching. Happy Turkey Day, everyone. I'll see you next time.